So, orthopedics is pretty competitive, and I get a lot of questions from students out there that are asking, what can I do to match into orthopedics, or what should I be doing? Well, in this video today, we're going to talk about an article that just came out that talks about that. What's up, everyone? This is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't want to miss them. So, a recent article that just came out that was titled, Matching in Orthopedic Surgery, and I wanted to talk about this article. They gave a lot of great evidence-based medicine about what students should be doing when applying to orthopedics. For those that don't know about the match process and about applying to various specialties, well, as a fourth-year medical student, the medical students before they enter residency, they apply to different residency programs. And based off of what specialty that you choose, let's say you choose to go into emergency medicine, well, you have to apply for those positions, you have to interview, and then go through the match process. Well, certain specialties are more competitive than other specialties. Dermatology, orthopedic surgery, neurosurgery, plastic surgery, those are the most competitive specialties to get into just because the reimbursement is really well as an orthopedic surgeon you make really good money the lifestyle is pretty decent as well and whenever there's a really great demand the competitive portion of it rises so a lot more people are interested in these particular fields and it becomes more competitive because of so so we're going to talk about this article they referenced in 2016 that 1137 fourth year medical students submitted applications for orthopedic surgery residency positions and these are from medical schools like all over the US and I'm not sure if this includes international medical schools but um, I think it's just US just um, a little bit more summary before we dive into it the average student applied to 79 programs, which is uh, which is what I applied to. I applied to 81 programs just because everyone else was applying to a lot of programs. I didn't want to apply to 20 and decrease my chances of getting in. So this is completely opposite of when you apply to medical school. I'm not sure how many medical schools are out there these days, but um, they're are I think about 160 orthopedic surgery residency programs and most people apply to a lot of them. So they talk about the residency application process is very competitive, it's very expensive as well as very challenging. The National Resident Matching Program or NRMP, this is a program that was initially started in 1953 in response to the growing trend of high pressure practices from hospitals, including offering medical students residency positions as early as second year. This was modified in 1999, an attempt to weigh the outcomes in favor of the applicants um, compared to the programs. So the article went on to mention that um, when they're looking at the different specialties, Diagnostic radiology, radiation oncology, ENT, dermatology, plastic surgery. The specialty that had the lowest match rate was actually orthopedics, and it's actually 75%, meaning that it's one of the hardest to get into. And as I mentioned, orthopedic surgery, neurosurgery, plastic surgery, dermatology are the hardest specialties to uh, get into. They also talked about how competitive this application process is and that the average number of programs that each medical student applies to has roughly doubled from approximately 41 programs in 2001 to almost 80 programs in 2018 so a lot more people are applying to a lot more programs these days it's becoming more competitive and they talked about the shotgun nature of this and people are just applying to all these programs which they probably don't need to apply to that many but you know people do it out of fear and that the concern that that they may not match so um, that's why people apply to a lot of these programs they talked about step one scores if you don't know step one is a test that you take after your second year of medical school and is the primarily number one way that programs use to screen one applicant from another. I have another video and some other changes that just came out about the 
step one going to a pass fail system here in the next few years and I'll put that right up here make sure you definitely check that out but um, they said that step one scores have been demonstrated to be weakly predictive of the performance on the orthopedic in training exam or the OIT this is a annual test that we take as residents and it is an eight-hour test that we take every November I think the date is November 11th of every year as a resident and this is something that they gauge to see how well you're doing in your training and if you don't do well on this test you could be put on probation you could you know uh, get held back from some of your clinical duties so you have to study for this test and people think that hey I got out of medical school I graduated I'm a doctor now I don't have to take any more tests well you're in for a rude awakening because um, every year as a resident you take an eight-hour exam. Away rotations. Away rotations are rotations that are outside of your home institution. Say for instance I went to medical school at Georgetown so I did a rotation in orthopedic surgery there my fourth year as well as my third year. We had early clinical exposure to orthopedics as med students but as a fourth year, I did a rotation, which was a month long clerkship or rotation in my fourth year. And then I did away rotations. And away rotations are, as they talk about in this article, this is the first decision that medical students must take when you're deciding on a career in orthopedics. You need to decide where will I do my away rotations. And most people do them at places that they are interested in. Say, for instance, I wanted to move back to Texas. So I did my away rotations, most of them in Texas. I did UT San Antonio. I did Baylor in Houston, as well as I rotated at Northwestern in Chicago. But the caveat is that you do not want to do all of your away rotations in one particular state. If you wanted to go back to Utah, you don't want to do three away rotations in Utah just because when you interview at other programs, say for instance you interview in Texas, they're going to ask you, hey, what did you rotate at? And if you say the University of Utah, I rotated at this other program in Utah, Utah State Orthopedics University, whatever, um, they're going to that's going to raise a lot of red flags and be like, okay, so why are you here, Dan, if you did all your weight rotations in Utah? So a key you know, tip is to rotate at you know, two places maybe that you want to end up at and somewhere else. So I rotated in Chicago just because I had a friend there. He let me stay on his couch for a month, and um, I wanted to check out somewhere outside of Texas. So it's uh, really important that you do maybe two somewhere where you want to end up, and then one somewhere kind of outside of that. We use a centralized system called VSAS, Visiting Student Application Service, but um, it's important to know that 17% of programs do not use this. So if you want to apply to a program that doesn't use VSAS, you have to just apply to that program directly. So just keep that in mind. But as a fourth year medical student, you're putting in an application for residency through ERAS, which we will talk about, but you're putting in an application for your away rotations through VSAS. So two totally different programs and applications that you have to apply to. They noted that the primary purpose of an away rotation is to make a good impression with the program and finding a good fit for the eventual residency training. They noted that 57% of applicants match either with their home institution, like I went to med school at Georgetown, so either at Georgetown or at a program that they rotated at. And I think that's uh, very true. Most people match at a place that they rotate at. That gives you the highest chance to match into orthopedics, especially if your scores are a little bit lower. They get to know you. Most programs would rather take someone that you know works really hard, that um, is a team player that is uh, great to get along with that you know is honest is it's a person that they, they can trust and you know the way to get people to know you is to rotate spend a month at their program and by the end of that month you know if they like you you know your, your chances of getting into orthopedics are higher so I would say you know rotate at programs at least three if your school allows it I did three rotations and um, I think that helped me match and I matched at the place that I rotated at UT San Antonio so 
I definitely think that that helped. There's a survey that found that completing a, a way rotation at a program increased your odds of matching uh, by a factor of 1.5. So it, it, it definitely matters. Most people rotated at two to three places. They This article talked about students that did three away rotations were no more likely to match than students who attended two away rotations. And I've heard that before, but um, I wanted to be on the safe side and you know spend another month and do more orthopedic surgery. So I did three away rotations. And the students that did three were more likely to have lower step one scores, less likely to be AOA members, which is honor society, and less likely to be in the top 10% of their class. So it makes it a little bit difficult to interpret whether one should do two aways versus three. I'm on the fence of I would do three just because that increases your chances of matriculation into you know residency programs. And I, I think the more people that know about you and have worked with you, you know, I, I personally think that increases your chance and this article may suggest otherwise. 87% of program directors report that the away rotations increases the chance of, um, you know, getting accepted to their program and it makes you more competitive. So definitely, you know, have a strategic plan about which programs that you're going to apply to, talk to other students who, who have went through it before, talk to the residents at those programs that you are interested in, rotate net and say, hey, what is it like there? What, what are the chances of me, you know, uh, matching at your program if I rotate there? They talked about the interview offers are usually sent via email or phone calls. It's very important that you respond back as quickly as possible. And I, I think this is something that is critical because some programs will send an email out, let's say at 10 a.m. on a Monday morning. Well, if you're in surgery as a med student or if you're in rotation where you can't get to your phone quickly, um, you may miss the opportunity to you know, go on that interview. So some people have their wives or their significant others or family members respond back to their emails. And what I did was I had a pre-populated response that in my email box that I just copied and pasted hey, thank you for the opportunity to interview. I would love to schedule this interview. I look forward to meeting you. So I didn't have to type it up really fast. I just copied and pasted and responded back really quickly. This article talked about 25% of people, the medical students reported that um, they had someone else respond back to their emails and most of these were not fast enough. And most of these interviews are on the first come, first serve basis. So really important that you stay next to your phone Make sure your settings on your phone, that the email updates like every 30 seconds or every minute, which is going to waste your battery. But, you know, if you miss an interview, that's really not good. So um, if you know you're going to be busy, make sure someone is at your email that can respond back really quickly. Because these interviews, you know, they, you know de decreases your chance of matching if you don't go on all of them. There's a, you know, key number of interviews or a number that's been thrown out there. How many interviews should students go on? Well, this article talks about that particular number, that key number is 12 interviews. And they talked about that orthopedic surgery applicants need to attend 12 interviews to maximize their chances of matching. So that's the target that you wanna to get to. You wanna at least get 12 interviews. And I think it's not in this article, they didn't mention it, but 80 to 90 some percent chance if you get 12 interviews. And I've known some students that have interviewed at 18 places and didn't match. And I mean, you just don't know why. Maybe it was something in, during the interview process. Maybe that something happened. They, you know, they're just odd people in general. I, I don't know. But uh, 12 interviews, I'd say a good number to have. I think I went on maybe 14 interviews. They went on to talk about some other stats about your application. Like, is there anything in your application that may increase your chances of matching. Well, if you're an AOA member, which means like the Honor Society, the Alpha, Omega Alpha, if you have AOA, and I wasn't AOA, and some people in my class were, these are kind of the people that are at the top of their class, or you have to get elected to this. AOA members had a 10% higher chance of getting interviews than the people who were not AOA. So. People who were at the top of their class received 8% more interviews. Also, the people who had more research had a higher chance of getting interviews. 
the applicants who had step one scores greater than 240 were 10% more likely to get interviews. So having research, being AOA, having a step one score of uh, greater than 240, which this may change now since the past fell, but uh, all of those things are important. They went on to talk about some of the costs. So the average medical student graduates with about $200,000 in debt. They talked about that the students that went on these interviews, they reported spending up to $5,000, $7,000, $8,000, as high as $25,000. So this is something that as a medical student you should plan for. Start saving in your first year, put let's say $50 aside each month. So when it comes down, you know, three, four years later, you have a couple thousand dollars saved that you will use to go on these interviews. So. You know, it, it can get very expensive because you're applying to these residency programs, you're doing away rotations, which no one is giving you extra money. You can get loans, take out extra loans, but no one's giving you extra money to go live in Chicago for a month for your few for your food, for your housing, for your travel. You have to pay for these things yourself. You have to pay for the airline ticket to get there, you have to pay for you know your expenses, your housing. You have most people rent rooms, um, so it gets very expensive. You may spend twenty five thousand, thirty thousand dollars in your fourth year medical school. You know on away rotations, on applications, on interviews. For you know if you're going on twelve interviews, that, that's at least seven hundred dollars per flight, hotel, gas, Uber, taxi. $800 easily. So um, you multiply that times 12, that, that can get really expensive. So definitely keep that in mind and make sure you plan for that. There are some opportunities for students to take out extra loans if needed, but you want to minimize how much loans you're taking out. You're already at 200000 Some people were like, hey, you know, the other 40000 is really not going to matter. But and at the end of the day, that, that adds up. So so I thought this was a pretty good article about how to match it into orthopedic surgery. Most applicants, medical students, are applying to about 80 programs on average. I think if you are AOA, if you have research, if you have, or at the top of your class, step one score before this new pass fail thing comes into place, greater than 240, that increases your chances of uh, matching. Some other things, the away rotations are really important. Make sure you have a strategy, where you're going to rotate. It depends on where you want to end up eventually. Make sure that you work really hard during these rotations, that you get to know all the residents, go up to them. If they're busy, you know, they're not, some of the residents may not reach out to you. Go up to them and say, hey, I'm a fourth year medical student from University of Wisconsin. I would love, you know, I'm looking forward to working with you this month. You know, that's how you meet, you know, people during that month because you may not have a chance to work with all the residents. So really important that you be on your P's and Q's at all times. Be helpful. Figure out how you can fit best in that rotation once you're there. So when they leave, they'd be like, hey, what happened to that student? <laughs> he was a really great asset to our team. Um, we need him at this program because he worked really hard and, um, you know, we're missing him. And that's the um, the type of affect that you want to leave when you leave a rotation. So um, all of these things are important. Make sure you stay by your phone when it comes down to, during the interview process so you can respond back quickly. But uh, yeah, this is a really good article. I'll try to link it down below in the description. Um, and um, I hope you guys have found this to be helpful. But uh, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. We'll see you next time.